Okay, we'll kick start the session now. Uh, uh, this is a uh, symposium on uh, a topic about Stingray and CrossBoss, which are the new system, new available system. So, uh, first I'll invite Dr. Sudhir Rathod, who is from UK. Uh, he'll speak about principles, indications, and contraindications of these devices. Uh, thank you, Nimit. Uh, thank you, the organizers. So, I will be talking about uh, this is the Know Your Hardware session. I know it's the end of the day and it's getting a bit uh, long day for you guys. So some of you might have listened and heard to these slides before, like Stingray Crossboss System, Principal Indication and Contraindication. Now the Stingray Crossboss device comp uh, comprises of three components. First component is a Crossboss catheter, as you can see here. It's an atraumatic one millimeter distal tip catheter, which you can fast spin and it goes into the subintimal space. It's a multi-wire coil shaft which provides precise turn and turn torque response. So it is atraumatic, so it's going to a subintimal space. It's 0.014 wire compatible. It can be used with a six French guiding catheter. Now the second two parts are a stingray balloon. So first you have to cross the cross boss catheter and then you have to exchange it with a stingray balloon. Now stingray is a flat self-orienting balloon that stays in the subintimal space, atraumatic, and has got two ports in the middle, one anterior and one posterior, you can call it at 180 degrees, and then you have to align the balloon in the direction of the true lumen to make a re-entry. Now the re-entry is performed by a dedicated wire, or you can make your own wire, a stiff wire like a um, confianza wire, but the wire which comes with the device is a 0 0.014 wire with the, which is like 9 to 12 gram with a very sharp tip here so that it can come out of this port and enter into the distal true lumen. So this is how it works, cross boss catheter. I will skip this, uh, so to make it a little bit more entertaining, I've got a little video for you, I will let it run. It's a, it's a movie. So uh, you can see here, the cross boss can be used to directly cross sometime true to true lumen if, the, if there's a tapering proximal cap. You can place uh, it at the proximal cap, and then you can see here, you, can, you have to do a quick turning uh, with your both hands and it will allow the cross boss catheter sometimes to go through the true lumen and it can cross the CTO in some cases, mainly in instant restenosis cases and some simple CTO cases, true to true, then you can cross the wire and you can finish the procedure uh, true to true lumen. So this is not a sub-intimal re-entry. Now in some difficult cases where we use it most often, as you can see here, this is a LAD CTO with a big branch coming up here at this point and the CTO segment is long. You bring your wire down, which is followed by cross boss. You can see that uh, you can't get the wire into the true lumen or the cross boss in the true lumen. Then you bring the cross boss at the proximal cap, as you can see here in the fluoro image. And then you again do a quick spinning. You have to spin it very fast uh, with both your hands. And what this does is slips uh, the cross boss catheter into the subintimal space and it goes in the subintimal space distal to the true lumen and then you can stop at that point you take the cross boss out leave the wire there with a trapping balloon in the guide catheter as in this cartoon and bring your stingray balloon down like this as you can see here the stingray balloon is coming down then you take your wire out as well the supporting wire and you can inflate the balloon up to four atmospheric pressure there are two ports in the balloon one facing the true lumen and one facing the wall of the artery so you have to align yourself, as you can see here. So you have to align when the balloon is uh, end-on. You can see both markers and an end-on balloon. So you know where the true lumen is by the contralateral injection. Then you bring your penetrating wire as it comes here and try to get into the, uh, through the port which is facing the true lumen. As you can see here, stingray wire. And you can move the stingray wire through the desired exit port. You can take it out of the port, bring it back and uh, carry on with it as you can see here and and like this it could be entered in the true lumen and you confirm in the true lumen by a contralateral injection then you leave the wire take the stingray balloon out anchor it in your guide catheter and take it out and then you can complete the procedure after this by putting the balloon in and then putting the stent in so part of the stent uh, is in the subintimal space Okay, so w what are the kinds of requirements for this procedure? You should be able to cross the body of the CTO either subintimally or intimally and distal artery should be healthy and there's a good re-entry zone in the distal artery because uh, if the diseased artery you can't re-enter. 
The lesion should be greater than more than 20 millimeter. Any lesion with previous wire failure, there are no retrograde collaterals. Then many people use this or sometimes it could be used as a primary strategy as well. Now I will just show you a couple of cases. Some of you might have seen the cases, but these cases didn't play this uh, morning very well. As you can see here, this is a right coronary artery CTO. Oh, same problem here. Next slide, please. So this was a right coronary artery CTO, which was proximal, going into the branch, very ambiguous proximal cap. Distal vessel was healthy, but it's a long segment CTO. So this has been tried anti-grade before, and the anti-grade wire went into the subintimal space, so it could not be completed. So this is the second attempt uh, uh, with the uh, Stingray crossbar system, as you can see. Uh, as you can see, we couldn't enter the proximal cap, so I used intravascular ultrasound in this case to identify the proximal cap and enter the vessel architecture with a stiff wire. And that on that stiff wire, I took the uh, crossbar catheter into the CTO body. That was the problem here. Next slide, please. So there you can see in the right-sided panel, the, seat, the, the wire was uh, distal. Then you see in the right-sided panel, uh, we tried to so we, we tried to push the, uh, push the catheter further down, but the catheter was not going down. So I made a, a little, I took up, exchanged this wire with a pilot 200 wire to make a, a knuckle in the artery. I'm sorry about this, it's just playing up here. Slideshow please. So as you can see here, let, let it start. So on this left-sided panel, you see sometimes the wire, if it is in the different plane, it might not go distally, but to create a subintimal space safely, you have to make a knuckle wire. As you can see here, the artery is very tortuous. So the knuckle takes the course of the artery and goes into the distal artery where the true lumen is. Next, please. Next, please. So then you can see the cross-pass catheter. Let it go back. So what happened in this case, the crossbars could not be advanced into the distal artery. So I have to use, uh, I have to exchange that with a wire and I have to use a Corsair as a crossbars to get into the distal artery beyond the distal true lumen. As you can see in this case, because due to some friction, the crossbars could not be advanced over the uh, knuckle wire. So I have to use a... Stop. Go back. Back. <coughs> so yeah, this one. So you can see here, a, this, is, this is a Corsair catheter, which is into the subintimal space, as you can see from the distal artery. So I can't enter the... I can't get the crossbars in. Next, please. Yeah, just keep. Then the then exchange for the stingray balloon, as you can see the stingray balloon, the flat, uh, you can see on the left sided panel, uh, you can see the, don't move slide yet, go, can you go back please, back one, yes, yeah, still leave it here, so you can see the stingray balloon here, you can see two dots in here, but this balloon, uh, and then you can see the balloon here, now in this, Thing, it looks a balloon is flat on in this it looks like a line so you have to find the view where it is end on next please so here you can see this is the situation so in this uh, if you see the angiogram like this the flat balloon you can't puncture you don't know where the true lumen is anterior or posterior next please so you have to go in a view where the balloon is end on so there are two markers you know the true lumen is behind this so you can make an entry next please then we made the entry with this wire as you can see in this uh, and the, which went into the distal true lumen, which you can see. Next, please. Go back. 
Yeah, let's. So this again, you can can you run this? So this again, you can see it's going between the balloon into the distal artery, which we confirmed. Can you play this one? So you can see the you confirmed that the distal wire in the true lumen with the contralateral injection, and then after that you exchange the stingray balloon. And next one, please. And then you can see this is the final picture. Uh, which uh, if the stent is placed just before the bifurcation so you don't uh, lose the bifurcation. Next, please. Can we go to the next uh, slide, please? Yeah, run this one. No, no, just uh, go slowly. Go back. Go back, please. Yeah, run this one, please. So this is another case, uh, this case I presented this morning, uh, again a uh, right coronary CTO case, uh, similar kind, uh, a branch here and a longly diffused artery, distal artery. It's not an ideal case for a stingray cross boss re-entry, but there is a uh, normal vessel just before the bifurcation. Can you run this please? As you can see here, the artery is diffused due to disease. Now this place is not ideal, so you have to make a re-entry near the bifurcation. Next please. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yeah, run this. So as you can see here, this wire has gone outside uh, or into the branch, so I was able to get into the true lumen. Next, please. And you can see this here. So I've tried to, I can't enter with the wire. It was such a difficult lesion to enter, so I made a knuckle here. As you can see here, this knuckle travels down and it makes the wire like this. You have to make the knuckle because then the cross boss can easily follow the knuckle in the self interval space. Rather than if you just go with the cross boss, it might not cross sometimes. That's why you make knuckle, but uh, sometimes the cross boss can pass also. Next, please. In this case, then you see the cross boss came all the way here. Then we took the cross boss out, put the Miracle 3 uh, 6 wire to keep it in place and then exchange for a stingray balloon. Next, please. Next slide, please. As you can see the stingray here. This is a flat on. Can you run these, please? Next, please. So we, after delivering the, so we delivered the stingray balloon and then again we looked for the view where the balloon is end on. It was a RAO cranial view. In the LAO cranial view, it wasn't end on. So. We, And when you got the end-on view, then you know that the true lumen is either anterior or posterior. In this case, the true lumen was anterior, confirmed by the retrograde injection. Then you take a wire and enter into the port, which goes anteriorly, and try to puncture, uh, puncture the artery. As here, you can see the, balloon, the, the wire coming out in the middle of the balloon, going into a distal artery, confirmed by injection into a distal artery. Next, please. And then you don't take injection till that point. Next, please. Then uh, after taking the stingray balloon, leave the wire there and do the dilatation of the whole subintimal segment. And then you, uh, next please. Then you put a stand, balloon and stent like here. So this is the final result in that case. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm not showing the full case. So you have to stay before the bifurcation. This case was difficult because it was, the landing zone was very close to the bifurcation. So that comes like one of the contraindication. Next, uh, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, I was asked to talk a uh, few words about contraindications. So obviously, the contraindications are this is a subintimal tracking and you have to re-enter into the distal vessel. So if the distal vessel is diffused disease or small in diameter or there is a major bifurcation close to the re-entry point, these are some of the relative contraindications for the procedure because in that case, if you re-enter beyond the bifurcation, you will lose one of the branches because part of it is subintimal. And if you can't uh, adequately visualize the distal artery, uh, distal, ar distal CTO artery, then it will be difficult to puncture. Suppose there are no retrograde collaterals and all the collaterals are ipsy grade, then it's very difficult to re-enter into the distal true lumen. So you should have good visualization of the artery. You still need bilateral approach and you need to prepare your vessel well and you should not do any injections from the anti-grade catheter after you have made the knuckle wire and the dissection in the artery. And then obviously lack of expertise, don't uh, try start doing CTO cases with the stingray crossbow type of cases. Develop your skills, anti-grade skills first. Once you are used to anti-grade skills, retrograde cases as well. And in terms of higher pattern, it comes up uh, when uh, 
you are uh, used to integrate and retrograde technique, then you can take up these cases. It, uh, the studies have shown it reduces the procedure time, it reduces the um, contrast volume as well. Sometimes it speeds up the procedure, more efficient as well. And then we come on to the hybrid algorithm where people say. And some people use it as a primary strategy as well in some cases if it looks a very suitable healthy vessel mainly in the right coronary artery mid CTO. I think my colleague is going to present some more cases later on. So I will stop here. Thank you. Thanks, Sunil. Uh, very well presented. In fact, very well demonstration of uh, uh, ADR. And you demonstrated very well, like, you know, your knuckle as well as cross boss, they go hand in hand. So it's very, like, when you do an anterior dissection re-entry, you can go with the cross boss, cross boss not going forward, you can do a knuckle, then again go for a cross boss further. So very well uh, demonstrated. Only question which I need to ask, I'm sure you would have done that. Once you get your stingray wire uh, into the true lumen back, do you stick and swab or you just work on the stingray wire? Yes, it's a good question. So th there are two ways to do it uh, because this is a very stiff wire when you go re-enter the wire because the wire entered at, a uh, at about 45 or 8, 60 degree angle and it tends to go towards the wall of the artery. As soon as you enter, you have to turn it 180 degrees so it points downwards, it goes in the distal artery and many times it's not possible. It enters the true lumen but it goes subintimally on the other side of the wall. So some people say you just take it, feel the pop, wire going and take it out take that wire out and take a pilot 50 wire and use that port which was uh, created with the stiff wire to go through a distal artery it's easier to cross that way sometimes which is called stick and swap and many people do that it depends how the things are going but sometimes if you puncture then i will rotate at 180 degrees so pointing in and then you go down but it's a stiff wire so it can go onto the other side oh, dr khan speaker microphone Hello. When you make a knuckle and you, you go inside, and if suppose you reach the beyond the the uh, CTO body, do you still have to use a cross boss, or it is only during the CTO body that you use the cross boss? No. Uh, yes, uh, it's a good question. The thing is, you need to use the cross boss because sometimes the knuckle has not reached all the way where you want the re-entry to be done. So you use the cross boss, or because you have to exchange it to st uh, you have to exchange it to a stingray balloon now and it's very difficult to exchange the stingray balloon onto this uh, uh, knuckle wire. So you put the cross boss there where you won't take this uh, knuckle wire out, move the cross boss a little bit, maybe you don't need to move much if your position of re-entry is good. Then when you have to take it out, you have to use a stiff wire. So people say you use Miracle 6 and leave it inside the cross boss up to the tip and then take the uh, cross boss out. So Miracle 6 stays in place, it doesn't move from there. If you try to put the stingray balloon on a knuckle wire, it might move, flip around, and then it goes easily to reduce the hematoma in the subintimal space. So that's why you don't take injection. So that's the whole reason. I think the cross boss is just there to keep it in the space, uh, or maybe sometimes the knuckle is not all. That's why you stop with the knuckle. Don't go with the knuckle too far, because you might have to go a few more millimeter with the cross boss to create a fine dissection, because knuckle creates a big dissection. Do you stop at some point rather than going up to the bifurcation, because it moves very quickly. So, so that's where the cross boss can come into play. Exactly, the answer in the question, like, uh, go with cross boss as much as possible because that's a controlled... Dissection. Absolutely, yeah, that's what I thought, and more of cross boss. Okay. Yeah. So the rightly said, you just stop, yeah, if yeah. you're not going with the cross boss, just stop two to three millimeter before, yeah. then go with the cross boss. Because if you go beyond the CTO, uh, and then if with the knuckle, which is uncontrolled, you get a large hematoma, hematoma. then you won't get the retrograde, uh, you won't get that filling, so you won't know where to enter. So just but classically, you make a small knuckle, go a little bit inside, and then start using the cross boss. Is that the is right. that the classically described way so that you get a smaller uh, dissection smaller rather dissection. than that? No? Yeah. Is that True. correct? Yeah, yeah that's but correct. You can also like it's the way it was shown in the video. You can just directly go with the cross. You can directly go with the cross boss. Actually, sometimes it is difficult. Cross. Some people say if the cross boss is not going, wire is gone. You dilate with a 1.5 millimeter balloon or small balloon at the in the subintimal space at the proximal cap. So you enter the cross boss and then withdraw your wire and then go with the cross boss. But is sometimes there, is there any image. way to know whether you are going in the right plane or you are not going in the right plane? Is there any fail or anything where you know that no, you cannot go more, you need to stop and maybe do something else? Is there something like that or any time that once you have made a knuckle, you will just go through and through and go The, go the most right? common problem is it goes into the RV branch. If there is a branch coming out there, it could go into that and then you would know that it is going in the branch. Exactly. So you have to see that it is following the curvature. So the distal visualization is very important and your... Uh, 
uh, guide map of the artery, which way it is going. So it, it, that is a common problem. Sometimes you go into the RV branch, then you take the wire out and direct it towards the, true, towards the vessel architecture and then go with the cross boss again. So it happens sometimes, but that's like more complex uh, ADRs and things. Uh, there are ways to deal with it. Sometimes if the hematoma is big, you can't see the distal artery, it can create hematoma, then you straw, a straw. A straw is the technique when you can aspirate from the stingray balloon, the subintimal, uh, uh, the hematoma in the subintimal space. So you can uh, aspirate uh, one or two mil of blood or half a mil of blood, and then you can start seeing the artery. Because you need to see the distal artery to make a puncture which way you have to go. Then there's a bl uh, so I think, uh, should we move on to the next sure. presentation? Sure. Well, they, they say that in the guidelines, uh, even, Amer even the Japanese uh, algorithm, they have included uh, cross-boss usage in ISR CTO. So in instant restenosis CTO, because there's no subintimal space in those cases. So you can go with the cross boss and cross boss is very good actually. It doesn't get caught in the stent strut and this is one of the indication for primary use as well. Just cross boss, you go into true to true lumen. Well, if you, if you try using more cross boss, if you try in a simple JCTO1 lesion, so maybe there are 50% lesion JCTO1 where cross boss may be cross uh, directly true to true, short CTO without trying any wire, it might cross. Okay, just because of the time, we'll go to the next speaker. Next speaker is uh, Dr. Kar Arun Kalyan Sandaram, and he's going to give a lecture via Skype from US. So, uh, be ready? Oh, yep. Yeah. Are we live? Hey, good evening, everyone. Hi. Hi, Arun. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, hi, Sudhir and uh, Nimit uh, and everyone else. Um, good to see you guys. Well, I can't really see you, but anyways. Well, we can um, see you very well, yeah. Thank Wonderful. Thanks to the organizers for letting me do this, uh, and uh, Ganesh, Dr. Ganesh in particular. Um, so anyways, um, I heard a good portion of Dr. Rathor's uh, talk, and it was fantastic. Um, so let me give you a quick U.S. perspective on the hybrid algorithm. Um, I'm assuming you guys can see the slides, correct? Yes, very good, yeah. Carry on. Ex excellent. All right, so just a little bit of history. We started off with antiquated wire escalation about let's say 12, 13 years ago, uh, the Japanese were pioneers in some very elegant retrograde techniques, and then uh, around 2008 was when dissection reentry antigrade came into being and uh, kind of all came together uh, with what was known as the hybrid strategy around 2011 and subsequently led to the formation of the CTO community. Uh, a couple of misconceptions about hybrid, uh, I do want to say hybrid is not the US and Europe, there are no rules, only principles. It's not a club. It's fairly inclusive. It's a community. Uh, what are the key concepts? I mean, there are four strategies that you utilize. Your wire escalation, anti-grade, wire escalation, retrograde. You have anti-grade dissection reentry and retrograde dissection reentry. And you switch between various strategies depending on anatomy and if the others are options in the case. So one of the other things that happened was the standardization. So what do you mean? In 2011, the wires that we primarily use for wire escalation, we kind of said, all right, is there a way to make it simpler? So if there's a microchannel filler XD, there's a clear path and a target, go with the Conquest Pro 12. If it's an unclear path um, and target or tortuosity, go with the Pilot 200. What does standardization do? Makes the procedure teachable, is better inventory management, and makes it more efficient. I do believe this was a game-changing event. Now with Newer wires, um, you know, we do use the Gaia series and uh, obviously the family of the XD, XDA and XDR. The other concept that I wish to kind of stress on is that complex anatomy requires alternate methods of revascularization. Um, wire escalation, as good as our wires have gotten and our techniques improve, uh, we are still not doing great with wire escalation strategy. Um, if you look at IVAS guided wiring, um, it Success rates probably as good as about 60%, and parallel wiring is a little bit better than 50. Um, if you look at increasing JCTO scores, wire escalation becomes less and less relevant. What works? Retrograde approaches work. Anti-grade dissection reentry works. And uh, retrograde, as good as it is, and with you know the newer wires, et cetera, our success rates have improved. However, even in the hands of experts, in about 30% of the cases, 
it's not necessarily an option when you set out to do retrogrades from the get-go. Um, and uh, updated experience from some of our expert Japanese colleagues, I'd say overall uh, collateral crossings about 89%. And again, they're dealing with a lot of complex anatomy, etc. And final procedural success was about 70%. And remember, they've been doing it a lot longer than most of us in other parts of the world. Um, similar experience from the U.S. The numbers are about um, overall success rates of about 70% when the initial approach is deemed to be retrograde. Um, and uh, similar numbers from the UK. So the point I'm trying to make is that even in the hands of experts, it's probably not an option in about 25% to about a third of the cases. Complex epicardial collaterals may carry an excessive risk to the patient. Now, take operators that are not as experienced as those who have had a lot of experience with retrogrades and uh, more complex anatomy than we're looking at potentially risky um, scenarios. No, does that mean anti-grade dissection reentry works all the time? Absolutely not. Uh, what I wanted to stress on is that more options translates into higher success. There is no one solution for CTO-PCI. Every approach, anti-grade wire escalation, retrograde, anti-grade dissection reentry, all have failure modes. And failure rates increase as anatomic complexity increases. And bottom line is the more options you have, the higher your chances of success because you just need to win one way, not every way. Uh, ground rules, try and not do ad hoc CTO PCI. Make sure if you have had prior attempts or old films that we study them. Uh, as this is again particularly important in patients who have had uh, bypass surgery. I think it's important to know where the graphs are. Um, and here is really uh, getting to hybrid. So there are four fundamental questions that you want to answer. Number one is the proximal cap of the CTO. Is it ambiguous or is it discrete? What do we mean by discrete? Are you confident of taking a stiff wire and a microcatheter and sticking your stiff wire into where you believe is the proximal cap and advancing by a couple of millimeters? If you're sure, it's discrete. If you're not sure, it's ambiguous. Second, and I think uh, Sudhir just talked about it, how is the reentry zone? Is it diseased? And the second attribute that you want to consider is, is the distal capital bifurcation. So a good reentry zone is a juicy landing zone, meaning it's not diffusely diseased and also really is not at a bifurcation. All right. The third the, uh, anatomic parameter that you want to consider is how are the interventional collaterals? Again, it doesn't matter if I can wire it or Sudhir can wire it. Is the question is the operator you, can you wire it? If, is something that you can wire, that's an interventional collateral for you. If it's not, it's not an interventional collateral. The fourth is what is the length of the lesion? Is it greater than 20 millimeters or is it less than 20 millimeters? And this number again actually came out of uh, JCDO. Uh, greater than 20 millimeters was deemed an uh, independent predictor of failure to wire it within 30 minutes, i.e. you don't get it efficiently wired. So that determines strategy in terms of how you approach the CTO. So again, I'm not getting into each of these individual cases, but the bottom line is systematically evaluate your CTOs and try to answer the four questions <coughs> in each and every CTO. Again, you don't actually have to write it down on a sheet of paper, but please do try and answer these questions. Here's the money slide. This is the hybrid algorithm. So bilateral angiography and uh, you want to answer these two questions first. Do you have a clear proximal cap and a good distal target? If the answer is yes to both, you start anti-grade. If the answer is no to either, you go retrograde. Now, the next determinant is the length of the lesion. Is it less than 20 or greater than 20? If it's less than 20, you go wire escalation. If it's greater than 20, you go dissection reentry. Dissection reentry anti-grade essentially has translated into crossbar stingray. Dissection reentry retrograde for all practical purposes is reverse card. Now, if either of these strategies fail, you move on. If wire escalation fails, go dissection reentry. And if it fails, anti-grade, go retrograde. If it fails, retrograde, go anti-grade, assuming these are options in the case. So the hybrid approach, in essence, is a systematic way of adopting the four strategies, the sequence of which is based on both the probability of success and the risk of complication and you switch between strategies fairly rapidly. I don't get stuck in failure mode. Once again, 
the first three parameters determine initial directionality. The length of the lesion determines are you going to go wire escalation or subintimal. Now, again, remember it's all easy when people show it on slide showcase cases, but there are problems that you will encounter in CTO PCI. And uh, there are algorithms within every, you know, every problem that you have, you potentially have options or solutions to the problem. And uh, let's say here's again an illustration of where you get a wire across, but you won't, you can't get the gear across. It goes from the basics like increasing support, doing balloon assisted micro dissection, etc., using micro catheters that are stiffer to essentially bailing out and going retrograde. Again, I'm not delving into each of these in the interest of time, and this was just an example. So let's talk about how this all comes together. Here it is in, uh, well, thankfully the videos are playing. I hope they're playing there too. Yes. This yeah, is an example of, great, of an LED occlusion with a blunt proximal cap, kind of ambiguous, a decent landing zone, a septal collateral, the, the juicier one actually comes right at the distal cap and actually the angle favors going further down as opposed to backwards. Uh, the better collateral actually um, might be a little bit more challenging, but it's totally doable. However, in this case, there's a solution to an ambiguous proximal cap and um, it is to do an IVIS guided puncture. And here you can see a microcat, once the puncture has been made, take a microcatheter and get into the architecture of the vessel um, and now there was a discussion had about what's a knuckle versus what's cross bus. The knuckle causes a dissection plane that is bigger and uh, the cross bus causes a more controlled or a smaller dissection plane. I think this is what Sudhir was referring to. It's especially important to use the cross bus uh, when you knuckle a wire because you want to have a controlled subintimal space and the success of ADR primarily is determined by how tight your subintimal space is. So again, here, once you're in, the decision was made to proceed with the cross bus. And uh, you see that the cross bus is uh, essentially gone through beyond the distal cap. Now, once the cross bus is beyond the distal cap, you want to switch it out for the stingray. And you deliver the stingray balloon over a Miracle 12 wire. Um, again, if you don't have a Miracle 12, 6 is perfectly acceptable. <clears throat> you remove your cross bus, trap it. Get your stingray in the right position. Uh, get your stingray to the right position. Inflate it, and uh, that is the wrong orientation because, as was pointed out before, that essentially will. You can't tell which way to go, and uh, that again, if that's the wrong orientation. We, uh, you do not want to see the wings of the stingray. And I gotta wait for the next slide. Sorry about that. Okay. So the way when you have a wrong orientation, you move the II around and get it to the right orientation because you do not want to see it like it's on top. You want to see it like it's on bottom. And now that is the right orientation. You want to see one line. I have no idea why these don't loop if they were supposed to, but in any case, uh, this is the or this is the uh, a picture of the stingray balloon oriented in the subintimal space. And again, now it makes sense why well, you don't want to see the wings. You want to see it. Um, you, you just want to see one line. Again, this is a stick, obviously from a different case. Um, and and you see that there's only one line. You don't see the wings. And uh, here, going back to the same case. Um, I think so they're just talking about stick and swap, which is what we do a lot of times. You take out the, the stingray wire and then put in the pilot 200 um, and get back into the true lumen. And uh, in this particular case, there is no retrograde uh, option, at least from the other side. So uh, one injection was done, knowing that there's always pros and cons to doing it. Um, and after that, essentially reconstruct the vessel with stents. This patient happened to be part of a trial, so I actually had a OCT done about 12 months later, which uh, showed good healing of the dissection plane. And I can't see how much time I have left, so I'm going to um, keep going. Just have to take my word for it. So here's the next case. Um, 
you have a patient with uh, an RCA CT, or at least that's what you see in the first picture. And you can see that there are occlusions on the left side too. There's a CERC CTO and uh, there's an LAD CTO. So the patient essentially has multiple CTOs. Appropriately, the patient was referred to for surgery um, given the low EF, et cetera, and the multiple CTOs. Was the patient was turned down in two hospitals. Uh, the patient was revascularized under impella guidance. And uh, given the 14 print sheet, et cetera, for the impella, every attempt was made, at least the plan was to try and revascularize the patient as much as possible in one setting. Started anti grade wire escalation with the RCA. And uh, going to the next slide here. Okay, so the anti-grade wire escalation did not work. The wire was subintimal, but there was a great retrograde option. Um, as you saw, the, there were fantastic collaterals from the LAD. So that here you can see in the second AVI, the retrograde wire getting back into the guide, and essentially that uh, the RCA was taken care of retrograde. Sorry, there is a significant lag here in moving that stuff, but in any case, uh, CERC, once again, wire escalation initially. Um, the second AVI, you can see that the wire is, uh, wire is sub-intimal. So again, instead of dilly-dallying, got a stingray. Uh, there's already a corset there, got the stingray, uh, ballooned down, did a stick, and here you see the swap out for the Pilot 200, which entered into the true lumen. And you gotta wait until the next slide loads up, okay. Um, essentially, once again, patient was revascularized um, with stents. CERC was taken care of. And uh, finally, with the LAD, it was a wire escalation case and taken care of, all in the same setting. The, the, the point of showing this slide was to essentially, the, this is a patient with three CTOs, three different vessels, multiple strategies used in one setting. You had anti-grade wire escalation, you have ADR, and you have retrograde, and the patient was revascular successfully with about 2.5 gray and with not much contrast. In any case, if you can uh, get all these skill sets under your belt, uh, you have a much higher chance of success. Um, obviously, you know, uh, most of us are good interventionalists, start off with analyzing CTOs in a systematic manner, work on your anti-grade skills, retrograde, ADR, and, and uh, can truly work towards hybrid approach. Um, this, uh, the, you know, I was also asked to talk briefly about uh, what's going on in the U.S. right now. This is data from a couple of years ago. You see that uh, data from the NCDR, very slow increase in procedural success, but not really uh, anything to write home about. Um, around 2013 was about uh, 60%. Um, and uh, this is data pre-2011. Only about 10% of CTOs were even attempted percutaneously. Uh, moving a few years ahead, this is data from OPEN, which was the first collab adjudicated multi-center registry. Um, fairly uh, disease population with about more than a third of the patients having post-bypass uh, uh, post surgery. Um, and uh, if you look at, and again, uh, uh, patients were selected primarily based on clinical indications, not on anatomy. Uh, with an overall success rate almost close to 90%. Median uh, time was about two hours, 2.5 gray, and about 260 of contrast. And again, if you look at the final successful strategy, there's a good mix. About 40% were anti-grade wire escalation. About a quarter was dissection re-entry, and more than a third were, were, was, due to, was with retrograde approach. <clears throat> Most of these patients on one-month follow-up did pretty well uh, from a symptomatic standpoint. Um, in conclusion, I'd like to say every tool has a strength and a weakness. Don't get stuck in believing any anything, including crossbar stingray is perfect. Um, uh, we have a certain degree of comfort with wires. Uh, oftentimes, they're more dangerous than knuckles. Or um, you know, once you're in the subintimal space, knuckles don't exit the subintimal space. Um, I think hybrid fundamentally means like you know moving on, accepting uh, failure, and knowing when to take the next strategy if that's an option. I think the other uh, I think fundamental difference in concept is we emphasize architecture over lumen. Typically, when we cross CTO, I don't really care how I cross the body of the lesion, whether I'm in the subintimal plane 
or whether I'm in the true lumen, I'm, since we have good tools to re-enter into the true lumen. And uh, essentially, thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, um, I, can, I can speak for a few minutes or I'll leave it up to the uh, chair of the symposium. Thank you. Thank you, Arun. Uh, that was quite comprehensive uh, presentation on hybrid strategy that well uh, goes well with the program. Uh, I think in the interest of time, we have to move on here. But thank you very much again uh, for making effort to make this presentation on Skype. Uh, thanks for allowing me to participate. Really appreciate it. Sorry I couldn't be there. Uh, good luck, guys. Thanks, Arun. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Okay, let's, uh, let's uh, move on to the next presentation. I would like to invite Dr. Sanjeev Roy to give us our Indian experience with this device. Good evening and thank you uh, for allowing me to share my experience. Uh, I had been proctored for Stingray and Crossbay bra system almost a year back and have been using it uh, for some time, almost a year. So I'm going to show you about three cases. Um, the first case is this is a 68-year-old gentleman. He's a diabetic hypertensive, symptomatic stable angina, three-vessel disease, advice for surgery, what wanted PCI. And PTCL and stenting of uh, LED and LCX was done in May last year. And uh, the CTO PCI was attempted, but the wire was uh, subintimal, so it was planned for a electively at a later date. So this case was done, you can look at here. The origin of the RCA was a little bit difficult to uh, make the guide more coaxial. And this is almost uh, about two months after the initial attempt of uh, trying the CTO PCI in the RCA. And uh, finally, we thought we will go with an amplarts, uh, but again, the amplarts are also not very coaxial, uh, giving the support. So first, we tried with the filter X3 wire, escalated. The wire was still, you can look at here on the right panel at subintimal, escalated to this was gradually progressively to intermediate wire, and this was Gaia 3. Again. Uh, if you look at, although it is going to one of the PLV branches, but the wire is subintimal. So at this point of time, we thought we will go with a cross pass. And uh, you can look at the cross pass being placed here on the, the right panel. And we could try pushing out, but you can look at the guide backing out. So we didn't have good support of the guide, and none of the guides were because of the very abnormal origin of the uh, RCA was getting a coaxial support. We tried several of them. And finally, we thought we will take a um, guide liner. And with the guide liner, we tried. And again, uh, it was almost up to the crux that we had reached. And you can look at the way it was jumping out. We, we were not able to progress further. So at this point of time, we thought we'll try the knuckle technique, trying exiting from the subintimal space. And you can look at here. I'm sorry, this last video is not running. So through the knuckle, we were finally able to uh, re-enter the lumen. And after re-entering Lumen, uh, we finally stented this. And there was, you can look at some haziness in the, uh, the PD Austria, but at this point of time, uh, we did not want to touch it. And it's been almost 10 year, and he has undergone a stress echo, which is almost normal. So he's completed 11 months. Uh, Dobutamine stress echo at seven months follow-up was negative. And in his last visit in April 2017, he's asymptomatic clinically. So this was the first case. Uh, second case, this is a 66-year-old gentleman. He had a recent lateral well MI from an anomalously originating circumflex from the right sinus. He has already undergone a PCI with two-stand strategy, step crush technique for the bifurcation lesion in the circumflex. So this is, uh, again, a similar very abnormally origin RCA. Again, uh, guides were not coaxial. It is not a CTO, but a subtotal occlusion and the flow had slow even before we could attempt. You can look at, uh, there was an anti-grid flow. And we tried again with some wires, microcatheter support, uh, but nothing we could penetrate. And at this point of time, everything backed out. 
And you can look at we have lossy branch. So why was subintimal to start with and now it has launched. So at this point of time we tried a couple of wires but we were not getting into. So we thought it is another case where we can, it's a very short segment uh, CTO. So again uh, the, the uh, cross bus should work. And look at the cross bus, the way it jumps into the true lumen, that's one. You can look at the right panel. It was a very short segment and it straight away jumps into the true lumen having crossed the CTO. After that things were easy and we just stented the CTO. See the third case was very interesting and this was in two stage. This is a very young patient, 40 year old gentleman. He had an acute coronary syndrome, non-diabetic, obese, strong family history. He had LBB on ECG with mild LV dysfunction. He had a very tight uh, lesion in the circumflex and had a, uh, you know, CTO of the uh, LED. So circumflex was done at another hospital, so he had come for the LED CTO, which we had attempted uh, once, but again wire was subintimal, so we thought uh, that we do it in the second setting. And this is the second setting where we thought of doing it, and we tried to surf or look for the septal collaterals, looking for some retrograde channels, and uh, tried all kinds of channels were not able to make through. So finally we thought of going for an uh, anti-grade dissection. And this is how, uh, this is almost entering the same sub space that uh, the wire was earlier. So you can look at here from the retrogate channels, <coughs> the, wire, uh, the, the microcatheter is not in space. And here we tried knuckling. We made a subintimal, created a subintimal space. We replaced with a cross bus and oh, okay, uh, in the meantime when we were doing, we had a dissection of the RCA. So we had to fix the RCA here. So the RCA had to be stented here. And thereafter we resume with the LED. And you can look here, the knuckle being closed but away from the LED close to the septal branch, between the septal branch and everything. At this point of time, we again started going with a cross pass. And thereafter, uh, you can look at here the uh, stingray balloon being tracked distally. And after ensuring that this is the proper alignment of the stingray, we stab and swap the wire after entering the main vessel. So this is sticking with the stingray wire and this was then re-entered with the pilot 200 into the true lumen. At this point of time uh, we were trying to trap the balloon and take it out having entered the true lumen. Uh, you can look at here, we have entered. And the worst thing that can happen is we have lost the wire from the true lumen space. So after, and this becomes very difficult because you have created a subintimal space, you have a lot of hematoma, so almost gone. So what to do, and we tried, retried again. Uh, the, there was a lot of intramural, uh, int, uh, subintral hematoma, we were not able to again uh, re-enter the lumen. So at this point of time, this is again, these are attempts to re-enter the lumen from the subintimal space using the stingray balloon. So what we thought is we can do, uh, create, make the space in the subintimal and come back later on. So we made a space here in the subintimal, you can look at, we balloon dilated that space and left it like this, right? And then about eight weeks from here, we brought him back. You can see here there is a subintimal space created and still you can have some flow here. Re-entering through that subintimal space into the true lumen now was much more easier. So initially uh, just <coughs> entered with the Pilot 200, changed to uh, Filter XTR and this is how we re-entered and rest was easy using, sorry using three strengths and a mini crush to tackle the diagonal. The 
So this case had a failed anti-grade and retrograde approach, so up to ADR, and then ended with the complication losing the wire position. And in the procedure, we also ended up stunting the RCA. It was again re-attempted, having made the passage to uh, successfully end with a bifurcation and two strengths. Again, he had a follow-up, uh, almost completed in a year, and he has no inducible ischemia, currently on single antiplatelet. So this year, I've done nearly about 13 cases of cross pause and string ray, in two, used string ray in two cases, uh, successful in 11, failed in two, with plan to re-attempt, but they have not shown up uh, yet. So a very sh short, ex limited experience of mine. So I just thought I wanted to share a couple of cases. Thank you. Thank you. That, uh, that was a great presentation that, as, we were, uh, as, as some of the audience was asking before. Sometimes you can use a cross bus catheter on its own because it's atraumatic tip. Mm -hmm. It can cross to true to. Not yeah, one of the examples you said that the instant yeah. reasoners, it works very well. Yeah. Very well. Similarly like this also. In your cases, two of the cases, you didn't even require the stingray balloon. But in your last case, uh, you were using the eight French uh, guide catheter or? Uh, uh, no, this was seven French. No. Uh, so that was one of the limitations. Motion. It has happened to me once. I was not planning to use stingray. I used the stingray in a seven French and caught the wire down. I couldn't take the balloon. Now, out. then I have to, uh, sorry, then I have to, when I couldn't take the wire out, I, there was a stingray balloon Boston people there. Then I have to make a call from uh, UK. I, I spoke to doctors in Ireland, Bill Mardi in US, a few other people I spoke to how to take this out. And they suggested uh, that you can rip it out like a, like a sheet, rip the whole stingray balloon out because there's no other way to come out. That might be one of the problems. There are one or two balloons on shelf. Emerge balloon has got a low profile 2.5 balloon, which can go, but other balloons, it's, it's difficult with seven French. But now we've got an LP available, a stingray yeah. l uh, low profile, which is seven French compatible. It's still not available in India. India. So that's why it might be difficult your wire came out because when you're trying to uh, j an uh, uh, anchor it in the guide catheter, it doesn't work without eight French. We were planning to use an eight French, but we had only jail curve on that day. We didn't have an extra mm. backup support. So uh, we had only extra backup support in seven French. So we thought we'll give it a try. And that's what exactly happens uh, if you use a conventional stingray, not the stingray LP yeah. uh, in a seven French. Dr. Roy, fantastic cases, and congratulations for the initial experience, what you have of 11, 13 cases, which is fantastic. Uh, just uh, questions about the first and the last case, if I may. So first case, uh, how did the crossboss help? Did the crossboss help at all? Yeah, it, it navigated most of the part of the CTO, and it was just near the crux, you know, where the PDA originated, where we, it did not go, I mean, further. And we thought we will try the... But you said you entered into the true lumen. Your knuckle entered. Like, did knuckle you... Knuckle entered. Yeah, that was a slight bit of luck, I'll say. Yeah, very Many <laughs> times it doesn't... So, happen. I think uh, if you see it, uh, that case was... I think that might be all true to true because we have not done intravascular ultrasound, so it might not be subintimal the wire. Maybe where the knuckle was forming, it might have just uh, gone true to true near the bifurcation. It could it could happen sometime. Obviously, it does. Uh, some theoretically, it does not make sense when you make a knuckle. It should not enter. But sometimes the knuckle can go true to true as well. Uh, obviously, very rarely, unless you do ultrasound, you don't know. And your PDA is st and all the branches are still intact. So that gives an impression that. But it, it really helps. Sometimes it helps like a mm, better microcatheter as well. Cross boss is a microcatheter, but initially the. The wires were subintimal, that's for sure. Yeah. When we were using the cross bus, we were not sure whether it has re-entered the true lumen or not. I think but that's it more was likely. not progressing anything further, and mm. we didn't have any option left. Sure. Uh, did not have a good uh, collaterals to you know go for a retrograde approach in that case. So we just th thought we will try it. Sure, sure. The fantastic result, and there's a reason because of initial subintimal, you had that haziness at the bifurcation as well. Yeah. Last case. Uh, like I completely agree, what we do is what is called as the investment procedure. So we come after six weeks. Uh, the other techniques where you could just balloon the subinterval space as an inter we investment procedure. It, yeah. But would you need a knuckle to go all the way to the apex? Because you can just knuckle it whether your CTO segment is or where your uh, entry zone would be distally. 
do you need to take a risk of knuckling all the not way where you might we, lose we the scepter? We just wanted to make it in a good space there so that we can again have re-entry because we had made a point of re-entry. All we needed sure. was to serve that re-entry and re-enter the game. So that is my question to you, Sudhir, as well. Like, you know, with, I was just, that was a concern. Maybe I've not used it before because I have done knuckling, uh, done an investment procedure and come back. But I wouldn't, I haven't knuckled till the apex because I don't need to go to the apex. You might lose all the septals. You yeah, know. yeah. I think uh, it's a good because yeah. when you were showing it, I was. There was a difference because we had already re-entered. We had already pierced into the intimal surface. So even if you have a hematoma, it will gradually dissipate. I mean, dissipate, and the, the, the hematoma will resolve in over a period of time. Because when you when this is different from if you have not, uh, you know. Uh, re-entered the lumen, sure. then yes, it is absolutely not, should not be. Well, uh, when you were showing the case, I didn't hear that you were trying to do other investment procedure. I thought uh, you were trying to do a star procedure. Because initially when the dissection re-entry started, which was 10 years back, uh, there was a series published from Italy. They used to call it star procedure, where there was no device available. They make a knuckle like this and go as far as the knuckle will go. And then they try to enter, and sometimes it enters into the distal true lumen, but they have a very long segment of subintimal space and lose the branches. So I think uh, we will try to avoid uh, that long, but I think it worked well in your case. Uh, I think star procedures are no longer done now. No, no, they are not longer done because now the, you've got a dedicated device which is available. So star is not done now. Otherwise, they used to do the right coronary star. You push the... Because that's the thing. If you don't have a dedicated device, it's very difficult to re-enter. You can make a knuckle all the way and then you take a stiff wire and try to enter, which is uh, very, very but difficult. Even in this case, uh, I mean, we were ready for, again, retrying the, you know, uh, the stingray balloon and strategy like that. So we could have again gone. Inside. Yeah, great cases. Any questions from thank the you. floor? Okay, thank you, everyone. I think we'll close the session now. You had a very good session. I would like to thank Nimit, all the audience uh, staying so late uh, in the day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.